If you have any comments, place them in the appropriate section below the video. They are always appreciated. Plus, if you have any questions, we would be delighted to answer them. Hi guys, here I am in the vineyards of Alsace. We got here this morning from Strasbourg and we went to a town not far from here. We had some wine tasting and we bought some wine and now we're heading to some more of the small villages where we can enjoy the wine of the area. Lovely, convenient apartment located not far from the tram, which would take us easily into downtown. As usual, Jeanette has been brilliant in selecting good apartments from the standpoint of cleanliness, convenience, location, price, everything. Another cathedral, this time in Strasbourg. The astronomical clock in this cathedral is a result of the combined work of artists, mathematicians, and technicians, Swiss clockmakers, sculptors, painters, and automation designers all work together to produce this Renaissance masterpiece and superb attraction for us today. The current mechanism dates back to 1842. It rained a little bit in Strasbourg, but that didn't bother us. We were prepared, but didn't last that long anyway. Over the years, I've made it a practice of videoing the entire rental vehicle before I leave the premises as my protection against false claims of damage from the distributor. Guys, I can tell you it was an absolute joy to fly Eagle 3, my drone, over those vineyards and small towns. Absolute delight. The village of Rigue is one of the most picturesque villages in all of France and has won many awards. And we could see why as we wandered the streets. It's great to see that this type of construction that we're looking at here has been maintained and not lost to history. Over the centuries, Rikwa has prospered, particularly in the 16th century, by growing grapes and trading its reputed wine all over Europe. The prosperity enabled this town to build a double fortification wall. And the old town shows signs of that wealth with an urban fabric that is very dense with houses built from the 15th to 18th century. 
All of this forms an exceptionally rich architectural heritage. As you can see, a constant in all of the villages is the ambience. There we go again, more wine tasting, this time a Domain Hugel, a company that has been in business, of course, a family business for many, many centuries. I'm sorry that all of my spontaneous narrative as I walked along has been lost, and I've had to revert to voiceover after the fact, but it is what it is. I guarantee you, she was not the only one tasting wine. But at this point, I'm behind the camera. Here comes my glass now. Wow, massive casks. Believe it or not, some of these casks in this winery have been in use for over 800 years. This village of Kaiserberg has a population of about 2004, was first mentioned in 1227 when Emperor Frederick II of Germany ordered the building of a castle overlooking it. Most of the people here speak German. It is a really quaint uh, village and was voted one of the most favored villages in all of France. With all the visitors coming in to see it, I had trouble at first finding parking, but anyway, it worked out and um, that would be our last village before we head for Colmar. Brass signs among the cobblestones. Interesting. Finding parking right outside our apartment downtown was a simple joy. Good, I think so. Okay, cheers. Cheers. Okay. We are at which restaurant here in Colmar? It's called La Soy. It's a very small family-owned restaurant. With a fantastic reputation. With a great reputation. So unless, if you're not looking for it, you would even realize it exists. But it's by reservation, and luckily we were able to get in. We came here and they were full, but they squeezed us in one table in the corner here. Well, by the window. It's really, really lovely. Cheers to Colmar. Cheers. So this is Jeanette. Yes, you've gone out to film Are you comfortable me, right? there? Yes. Are you comfortable, G? Are you comfortable? Very. Okay. Oh, it's ready, ready. Oh, thank you. Thanks very much. So this is the little restaurant that we had. That's all. Thank you. So tell me about this. Gene. This is a speciality of the region. It's actually it's a flambe and it's 
like a very thin crust pizza, um, as thin as a crepe. And it's got monstrous cheese and bacon, onions. Mm. And you can get different toppings with it. It's a specialty of the area. Mm, very, it's different. So the wine that we are drinking tonight is uh, called Jawood Stramina. And it's it's a little bit like a, a Pinot Gris, isn't it? Would you say? Mm. It's close. It has a very Swedish flavor to it. It's very nice though. Smooth. Very flavorful. Yeah. It's... it's um, I had it in Luxembourg. No, it is a caramel I had in Luxembourg. No, we haven't had this wine before. No. Oh. It's very nice. That's why we're here, guys, in the Alsace region of France. <laughs> Try their wine from each region. And we're having a bowl so far. And we have two bottles we purchased earlier today that we mm -hmm. have to open at some point. At some point. Now we're walking towards Little Venice, which is just about four minutes walk from the last restaurant we had. You've had too much wine to drink. Yeah, I guess I have you because said, we've done all this. You said turn right and left and you're turning left. <laughs> yeah, I know. Cheese, left and uh, right. It's part of the fun. It's part of the fun. We had so much wine tasting today. So we're looking for Little Venice. We'll get there in a few minutes. What an atmosphere, G. Oh, I think this is the other one she told us about. The other restaurant? Le Letanios. Oh, this, that, that, this is it, right Tanio. on the right. Yeah. That's it. The pizza on your right here. Yeah. This, this is, is the, the one other she restaurant told us she about. recommended. Yes. That's yeah. Our, yeah. our hostess recommended this restaurant in addition to the one that yeah. we just came from. But but I like the other one we came from because yes. it was smaller yes. and more intimate. Yes. Idea, folks, of how intimate some of these restaurants are. Let's look at that. Look at that beautiful atmosphere in there. What, what do you think, G? Oh, absolutely beautiful. Isn't that lovely? Really, really beautiful. Wow. Wow. wow You're going wow. to walk further. Yeah. G, you told me something about this building. Yeah, this is a covered market. It's like a farmer's market where you get special specialties like cheese and fruit. Um, I wasn't fortunate enough to come when it was open, but I'll try tomorrow morning to see if it's open before we leave. Great. Yeah. So, yes. So, yeah. So, G, we this, had, is, we this had, is the Venice of, of yes, France, yes, they say? Yes. And oh, we had this. dinner and a lot of wine at one restaurant, yeah. and we'll go and have dessert at another and wine at another. You know, in a sense, this reminds me of the town of Honfleur. On the Atlantic coast of France. You remember how we love that that town so much, G? Mm -hmm. Except that we are in and here, but mm -hmm. the buildings are really medieval. And this is great. I think that restaurant ahead is some place that we ought to go and sit down and have something to drink. Maybe let's have some dessert with some nice uh, dessert wine. How about that? Okay. I just got declined by this Michelin star restaurant. Simply because we wanted to have a glass of wine and some hors d'oeuvres or dessert. And they said, no, it's for full dinner. So, too bad. Right on the canal. How beautiful is this? Isn't it? But I just spoke to the maitre d' there, and this restaurant that we were so interested in will only take patrons for wine and dessert between 3 and 5. 
But if you to eat at this time, which is when we showed up, it has to be full dinner. But we already had a full dinner. That's so correct. it's one of those things. But yep. what a beautiful romantic place it is. Take a look again. And look at that beautiful house over there too. Over here too. This is 6 a.m. in the morning, actually our first morning in Provence, as I walk through the old city on my way to the beautiful site where I propose to fly my drone. Early, because it's going to be a very challenging flight, and I want absolute privacy. You'll see. Hi, guys. I woke up very early this morning in Provence specifically to come to this magnificent, ancient, and historical site. There's a plaque on the church I'm going to read for you. This plaque is dedicated to Joan of Arc, and it says here, A son retour du sac de Reims, Sir Jonan. A province et attendu la messe, c'est cette basilique. Lay about 1429, avec le roi Charles VII. So this plaque is really dedicated to Jean d'Arc, as I say in French, in English we know it uh, as Joan of Arc. As you know, she fought major battles following a vision she claimed from Christ. So here it is. I'm going to go up in my drone to take some shots of this beautiful site so you can see the whole ed edifice that exists here in the town of Provence, not far from Paris.
In the Middle Ages, the whole town was surrounded by ramparts, forming a unique protective belt for all the inhabitants. Built between the 11th and 13th centuries at that time were five kilometers long. These imposing walls protected the citizens and merchants that came for the fairs of Champagne. You can just see how thick the walls are. Today, there are still 1.2 kilometers left around the upper town. As in most cities, the missing part was used to build or rebuild houses. That was a superb above-ground location. Now let's go underground. Hidden below the timber-framed houses above are two sets of medieval tunnels, some going back to the Bronze and Iron Ages. Dark, damp, and spooky. They are not for the claustrophobic, I can assure you. Provence was once one of the most important cities in France and was home to one of the most influential champagne fairs of the era on a scale not seen elsewhere on the continent. Attended by tens of thousands trading notably champagne, Provence was so important, but unfortunately little known in this day and age. It is a must-see attraction. The tour guide explains some of the many drawings on the walls. Here you will notice this is an inventory of wine and other merchandise that the merchant would have stored in this area. Look at the date here, 1788. This vast subterranean 10 kilometer long tunneling system goes back to the Bronze Age, the Iron Age, and the Romans were also here. Du délire de ces moments de tendre retrouvailles, ils ne dureront pas longtemps. Bonheur. If you enjoyed watching our videos, do comment below and ask us questions if you like. We'd love to hear from you. Cheers.